In today's video, I'm going to be covering how to use Squarespace's brand new feature called pinning. And we're also going to be looking at how to use it to create some more advanced implementations. Like for instance, we have this magic trick where the text magically changes as you scroll behind the image. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. So to use this new feature, just go ahead and edit the page. And the reason that you might use this feature is because, for example, in this layout, I have a lot of text over here in the paragraphs. I have three different items here, and my image is not tall enough to span this whole section. Like this would have to be a giant image. And so I'm just left with all this blank space down here. So this is a perfect scenario to implement pinning. So if I edit the image, you'll see this new pin icon here. And let's go ahead and start with pinning it to the top. So if I pin it to the top, that means as I scroll down the page, as soon as the block hits the top of the window, it's going to be fixed until it reaches the bottom of the container. So if I hit G on my keyboard, that'll bring up the grid. So we can see as this block gets to the bottom of the container, then it scrolls normally through the rest of the page. So that's what pinning to the top looks like. And this offset here is how much space you want between the top of the block and the top of the window when it's pinned. So if I increase the offset here, you can see that it's just moving down from the top of the window, and that way it's not totally flush with the top of the window as it's pinned. So this doesn't have to be in pixels. You can also do like viewport height units if you wanted to, that could be helpful. So 10% of the height of the viewport is gonna be my gap now between the block and the top of the window. Let's go ahead and look at pinning it to the center. So this is a really cool feature. So as you scroll down the page, the block is going to be perfectly pinned to the center of the screen until it reaches the bottom of the container. So that's a super handy one because a lot of the times that's exactly what you want. It feels more balanced that way when it's pinned to the center as opposed to the top. So it's super valuable. And then the offset when it's pinned to the center is just whether it's a little bit you know, above or a little bit below center. So you can kind of shift it in either direction. But most of the time when I pin things to the center, I'm just leaving the offset at zero because I do want it exactly in the center. Now, pinning it to the bottom, um, I'll scroll down the page and you can see that nothing is happening and that's because it's the opposite. So the block needs to be at the bottom of the container and then when it's scrolled into view, it's going to be fixed to the bottom of the window. So you can see it's starting pinned to the bottom of the window and we're sort of pulling it down the page into its original position. So pinning to the bottom is, you know, it's slightly different. You have to think about it in a different way that we're sort of pulling items attached to the bottom of the window until they reach their original spot on the grid. So one thing to note, it can be a little bit tricky to manage the block when it's a pinned block, because even in edit mode, it's gonna be kind of flying around the section. So as I'm moving it here, it's really important to pay attention to the blue frame because that's its actual like intrinsic position on the page. Even though, you know, as I'm scrolling in edit mode, it might look like it's in a different spot. It's the blue frame that actually dictates you know where it's aligned to the grid. I do want to note that on mobile, pinning is not um, assigned by default. So if something is pinned on desktop, it won't be pinned automatically on mobile, but you can pin blocks on mobile. So maybe you know on mobile I want to pin this to the top and now it's you know sticky and I can still do all the same offsets and things like that. But if you pin something on desktop, it won't be pinned by default on mobile. Real quick, one thing that I also want to mention is that you need extra space in a section in order for a block to be sticky. So let's uh, pin this to the top again, and we'll move this block to the top of the section. If I delete my paragraph, and there's no extra rows here for this block to be sticky in. So even though it's pinned to the top, it's not going to be pinned because there's no extra space for this block to be sticky in. So it's just, if you're not seeing a block be pinned, it's probably because you don't have extra rows for that block to be pinned in. So let's go ahead and look at the next more advanced implementation of how we can sort of combine these effects to do some cool magic tricks like this. So the way that I'm accomplishing this effect, uh, let me go ahead and kind of move things out of the way and I'll unpin everything so we can start from scratch. Okay, so um, this is just a little bit of a visual magic trick uh, in order to get this to work. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna just kind of align my image 
And so I'll align my image in my text block here. So I want the standout to start, and then when the image scrolls, of course, you know I want the next text block to appear below the image at the bottom. And so the way that I can have both of these blocks kind of, you know, fixed in the same position is if I make them both pinned to the center. So I'm going to pin this one to the center with an offset of zero. And that way, as we scroll down the page, you know, we still see the title coming into frame, and then it's fixed to the center of the screen. And then for this second text block here, I'm also going to pin it to the center with an offset of zero. And so that way, it's going to be pinned to the center of the screen as well. Except um, we don't want it starting at the bottom, we want it starting behind the image. And so that way, as it scrolls into view, now it's pinned to the center too, and these texts are in the exact same position. But the problem is we can still see the original text overlapping you know our normal text and so what we can do is we can bring in a shape block that's the exact same background color as the section background color and then we'll just move the original text behind this shape block so the stacking order for these blocks we want the and stand out to be behind and we can um, use these tools to kind of move things forward or backwards so right now it's behind the image. You know, I could move this all the way to the front and be in front, but we want it to be behind the image. And as we scroll down, we want it to be behind our shape block as well. So I'm gonna move it all the way to the back. And then we just want to make sure that our text block is not behind our shape block, we want it in front. And then we want the image to be over everything. So that way we now get our original text going behind the image, and then it's fixed. It's pinned to the same spot as our new text, but it's behind the shape block. The shape block is over our original text, but behind our image, and it's behind this text, which is behind the image. And so we get that sort of magic trick where we have a word that goes behind something and now it appears as a separate word. And it's just sort of being creative with how we're using that sticky effect. So you can create lots of different really cool scrolling interactions. And the one thing that I would say is you don't want to be using this just for the sake of using it. So like this is kind of a cool storytelling device where we're using the sticky feature to say, you know, we help designers stand out from the crowd. So it's like a little bit of an experience. It's not just being sticky for the sake of being sticky. And in this first example, when we had a lot of text over here, we were using it for the purpose of making sure there wasn't a, a whole bunch of blank space down here below the image. So make sure that you're using it for a purpose. It is a tool that you can now use, and it's a really awesome effect that can liven up your website and make it much more engaging. So if you're interested in creating more custom layouts like this, I explore this type of scrolling effect, and it's a more advanced scrolling effect in my course Custom Layouts with Squarespace. So you can see we have text interacting inside of an image where we have it be sticky and creates this like parallax effect on scroll. So if you're interested in that, then definitely you might be interested in checking out my custom layouts course. And I have a free training about my custom layouts course in the description below this video. So you don't even have to pay for the full course if you're interested in learning how to create a website that looks like this. So if you're interested in that course, again, I have a free training linked in the description below this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel for more Squarespace content like this, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.